Is that faster than a Major League fastball? Better up. saw the, the high-speed footage. It's unbelievable. Uh, I've never seen myself hitting that slow before. I mean, I've seen other, other sports and stuff when they, they use the high-speed cameras, and you know, I've always wanted to be in front of one of those. And good gracious, I spot a lot of flaws. <laughs> Look at that. Look at your bat is exactly at 90 degrees. That's amazing. It's all one letter. That's a good, that's a good swing. <laughs> Was that faster than the four-tenths of a second it takes to blink an eye? Our motion capture tracking technology reveals every millisecond of the pitch. When the ball is released, the image of the ball enters the batter's eyes, where it's broken down into electrical impulses. The brain takes 110 milliseconds to decode this data. By now, the ball has already traveled 15 feet. While the batter is calculating the pitch's trajectory and whether or not to swing, the ball has traveled another 15 feet. Now is the moment of decision. He must start a swing with the ball still 25 feet away from the plate, or it will be too late. And in the last 15 feet, the brain and the eyes cannot work together fast enough, and the ball is essentially invisible. At 95 miles an hour, a pitch reaches home plate in 395 milliseconds, less than four tenths of a second. That is, in fact, faster than the blink of an eye. Guys like Steve Finley make it look easy, but it's crazy hard. Don't believe it? Here's a fastball in slow motion. And here it is in real time. Did you blink? If you did, you missed it. Next, NFL linebacker Joey Porter takes a test, a crash test. Sports science strikes back in a moment. Newton's first law of motion states that an object at rest will stay there until an external force is applied. Like a golf ball resting on a tee. When a driver smashes into it, hello, external force. In football, they say that linebackers love to tee off on quarterbacks. And the only quarterbacks who stay at rest like a teed up golf ball are the ones who never see the hit coming. So the question is, how much force is generated when a steamrolling defender tees off on a quarterback's blind side? To find out, we brought in the most powerful external force we could find. NFL All-Pro linebacker, Joey Porter. Standing six foot three, 250 pounds, Porter defines force. For our object at rest, we call back the toughest guy we know, our resident pinata, Crash. Designed for testing in the automotive industry, 
Trash is composed of over 170 pounds of metal and high-tech sensors. Whatever you can dish out, this guy can take it. Specifically for you today, we want to see how tough you are. So we're able to put a sensor right in the back. Measure the force going in this direction, that direction, and the vertical direction. The other thing we have are angular rate sensors in the head itself. So we'll be able to see exactly how fast the head whips back. It's very much like a whiplash action. Now typically in a rear impact car crash that we simulate, we're going to hit this guy at about 12 miles an hour from behind. Did you generate that much speed? 12 miles per hour? Yeah. I think we got that. Joey Porter, you ready? Ready. We're going to finally find out how much force is generated from the blind side hit. Let's do it. We need a big hit from you. Is this pretty realistic? I feel pretty good. I feel like I made a big hit. Here's an inside look at the blind side hit. As Joey slams into his target at about 14 miles per hour, he delivers 1,160 pounds of force. That's the same amount of force as getting kicked in the back by the hind leg of a raging bull. As Porter drives forward into his target, the force is spread across his own pads, the quarterback's pads, and driven into the QB's body. The power surges through the dense muscle layers and into his spine. The backbone bends backwards, accelerating like a whip cracking and causing an unnatural motion in the head and neck. The result? whiplash, and the force increases by the time it reaches the head. The reason a quarterback can sustain a hit like this is because the spine does flex. But what would happen if the spine didn't flex? What if it was rigid, like concrete? To put the Joey Porter hit in more concrete terms, we brought in the world's best concrete breaker, Paul Pumphrey. Paul's the two-time world-breaking champion with the same height and weight of Joey Porter. Paul crushes concrete with the same force that Joey uses on football players. Right here is what we call a shoulder ram. We've got 20 slabs of concrete stacked up vertically. So we're going to take the energy and drive it. Normally, you know, we, we take our stacks and drive down. We're taking this horizontally across which is totally changing up the whole law of physics and everything. Man versus concrete, as opposed to man versus man. We'll see who wins. This is what it looks like to get blasted by a Joey Porter hit. Ah! If I was on the football field, I would compare this to a tight end coming across the flat. And I'm running full speed, and I slobber knock the snot out of him, bend his face mask. That right there is a football tackle. You don't want to get tackled by me. What does all this mean? A spineless quarterback won't last long in the NFL. And a hit from Joey Porter makes our crash test dummy wish he was back at his cushy day job. The Sports Science Lab has become the world's premier laboratory for measuring the pinnacles of human performance. And as long as the planet's greatest athletes are willing to push themselves to the limit, Sports Science will be there with high-tech answers to age-old questions. How 
do they jump so high? How do they hit so hard? Exactly what makes them tick? Because sports science is on a mission to explore how the cream of the crop rises to the top of the games we play. Be sure to check out every episode of Sports Science. This is where sports and science collide.